Hi, I'm Robert Carradine. I play Frank James in Bill Tillman and the Outlaws. Hi, I'm Darby Hinton, and I play Cole Younger in Bill Tillman and the Outlaws. Hi, I'm Richard Cutting, and I play Murphy in Bill Tillman and the Outlaws. With Darby Hinton and Bobby Carradine, who <laughs> play significant roles as villains in the film Bill Tillman and the Outlaws. Villain? Did he say we were a villain? Yeah, yeah he did. I think we were just misunderstood. Yeah. Yeah. We had a rough childhood. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. So we have you here today because we want to uh, talk to you about your significant experience in the Western genre. What, what draws you? To the Western genre of film, what's what's been your experience? And well, what, you got you got horses, which is always good. Yeah. You got guns. I mean, every little kid used to love dressing up and pretending he was a cowboy. Yeah. And you're dealing with real horses, real guns, real humans in a Western real bad town. Guys. Yeah, it's just it's the ultimate fantasy. It is. It's kind of like being a kid again, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. You, and you, you got know, all the toys. We grew up. You know, I, I knew the, the Roy Rogers cowboy code and the Gene Autry cowboy code when yeah. the good guys were good and the bad guys were bad. and It's just, it's a fun time. So there's also like a, an Old West rugged value system that kind of, that's, that's there, that's, that's very attractive. Plus you get to play with the toys and uh, it's shoot them up and there's action, you know. It's, and it's uniquely American. Yeah. Exactly, and the whole thing about going into work at uh, 6.30 in the morning and you, you get all your gear on and you strap on the Colt 45 and you go see your Wrangler and he hands you your horse and you mount up and it's just nothing feels like that. It's You're in the world. And you get to shoot people and they don't arrest you. It's great. No, it's incredible. <laughs> the, the Western genre is where it's at. How did you like working on a Western in the East Coast environment, because we shot this in West Virginia, is it is it different from your experience shooting, say, out west or around the world? Well, yeah, I mean, just geographically, it's an Eastern. It's not a Western. But I really dug it. You did? Yeah. yeah. And oh, we had... Oh, the scenery and everything was great. And we had snow flurries. We had everything. Right, right, yeah. yeah. And they, they built a whole town, didn't they? Yeah. In... Uh, out in the middle of nowhere, they built this western town. Right. And uh, they had like an old timey, uh, early 1900s automobile. I mean, it, it was incredible uh, production value. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. Because we're a long way from Hollywood out here. But I love that they shot in the old western town where they had the horses coming in and the people coming in and then the drone above it. Yeah. You know, take your shots. It just kind of brought the ages together. That's really cool. And I don't know if you guys were around that day, but they had, I believe it was like a Civil War era cannon, were yeah. you? Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember when they shot that sucker off. I yeah. Mean, that was impressive. It was, and, and, and I mean, the, the concussion off that thing was, was really extraordinary. Yeah, it had a finality to it. Yeah. <laughs> you knew which end you wanted to be on. Yeah. <laughs> and it had its own babysitter, you know, a guy who just actually, his cannon was his special. Yeah, he was the cannon guy. He was the cannon guy. Right? Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is important. You got to have Even guy. in the movie, they have him right. loading it wrong. and In life. Yeah. You got to have a cannon guy, right? Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah. Words okay. to live by. Yeah. Have a cannon guy. Yeah, that's a good license plate. Cannon guy. What do you think the uh, major appeal of this movie will be for audiences? Well, I know a lot of the fans that I get to meet and talk to and stuff always tell me one of the things they loved about the old Daniel Boone show was the family values yeah. and that you could take the kids to it, but it still had something for the adults and all. And that's what I love about this one. It's a throwback. It's a tip of the hat to the old westerns that... We're good. I mean, we shoot people, but the head doesn't explode, right. you know, and there's right. not just, and all of a sudden people aren't naked in the middle of it. Yeah. 
you know, it's a good family fun western. Yeah. Well, plus it's kind of unique in that I don't think people knew that, you know, they were shooting movies in the early 1900s. And that there was some crossover and between real crossover. cowboys and real Western characters right, and, and the movie business. Right, the movie business shows up in this little town and wants yeah. to make a movie. Yeah. Uh, it's it's pretty unique. I think people respond to it. Yeah, and the, and, and the fact that you've got older Western guys now in the, that part of their lives coming out into the storytelling environment with this new new technology called movies... It's it's really well, and you got bad guys. Some escaping on horses, some escaping in a car. Yeah, interesting. And it's just a really great. That's a time. great area. Yeah, I mean, right. it's kind of kind of unique. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's ever been a film where all these elements are combined in one two-hour sitting. Right. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. You you each played characters who are historically real peoples. What did you like about your your, your characters? Well, I mean, for me, getting to play one of the Jameses was that was cool. I mean, if you go back in the in the Carradine archives, there's a uh, uh, relationship with the Samuel family, which is the family that took over for the Jameses' father when he checked out. Oh, we didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we have cousins named Samuel. I had a cousin wow. in Florida named Marshall Samuel, and his middle name was Carradine. So you have a real-world connection to, to the, the Jameses. To the Jameses. So this is like a dream come true to that's, play Frank James. That's so cool. Frank James, haberdasher. <laughs> Time heals all wounds. Not all, Cole. Uh, if so, it's the grave. Frank James. <laughs> I hear tell. Frank James is going to be joining the less fortunate amongst us to rob a bank. Wow. But, I mean, yeah, Cole Younger, when I started doing research and reading up on this guy, you know, I always knew him just as an outlaw, part of the, you know, Jesse James and that. But, I mean, he was a war hero. If, if the war had gone the other way, he was set for life. Yeah. But because it didn't and they took everything from him, that's why he had to go into robbing and stealing and had a little thing against the bankers that, you know, took his ranch away and stuff. But just the fact, too, the man's walking around with at least 10, there's varying numbers, but at least 10 rounds of ammo from, in him. From the Northfield raid. and, and Well, yeah, and, and even before the Northfield. But the Northfield, when he was so shot up and his partner had his elbow blown off. Yeah. And still, they're three days on the run. Yeah, yeah. No, it's unbelievable. Bleeding what he out survived. there in the woods with, yeah. with no medical attention. Trying right. to yeah. keep a low profile because right. you got people chasing him. I don't think they make people like that. These anymore. are tough guys. Oh, right. yeah. These well, are they do, guys. and they go into the seals or something. Yeah, right, right. exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, th these were pretty incredible human beings. Forgotten relics from a forgotten age. You know, Cole, I, I, I got a good life here. I'm making a living. I mean, yeah, it's a little boring, you know? I'm kind of bored out of my head. Every day's the same, you know? You're stitching this and measuring that. I'm like a old maid or something. But I got respect. But I stand for nothing. And of course, I play Murphy, who is a hypothetical character. He's not a real guy. And I'm, I, you know, you were like the good bad guys. I'm the bad, bad guy. So it was really interesting for me to be playing with two historical guys and goading you, you know, sort of, it was really like working with mythological sort yeah, of... I want to talk to you about that goading. The goading? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. didn't you care for that. Yeah. You can't do that in 2019. Yeah, you know, no, no more goading. No more goading. All right, then we'll establish a no goading policy. No need to go there, Cole. You must have had a fun or funny moment on set. All sets have these 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 little times that you, you, you joke around with other members of the cast. Do you have a moment on this well, set? That... This uh, story happened during a shot. And Cole Younger and Frank James are trying to get in position to not get shot. And we go running into this shed. And one of our guys comes in and shoots him. <laughs> and just without even thinking about it, I go, what'd you do that for? <laughs> and everybody cracked up, but it's in the movie. They left it in. Okay, yeah, so great. That, that's that that's a funny hilarious. moment, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, mine, I don't know how funny it was. It was one of those moments that, you know, I'll remember the film by is when they loaded us in the, the prisoner wagon. Oh, yeah. This big old wagon, metal bars. It had been raining. It was ice cold. Yeah. And we're all sitting there trying not to shiver. But we get in this steel cage, and we start going down the hill, and the wagon has to take a right and go over this little, you know, dike over the, the water. And all of a sudden, you feel the mud and slipping, and we're locked in a cage. In a cage. And it's starting to tip, and we're going, this thing's going to go down like a rock. Right. And we're locked, and everybody's kind of like leaning yeah. over. Yeah. Like, we don't want to blow the shot yeah, because... Keep coming. Yeah. yeah, you almost drowned. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Special. Hilarious. Gotta love movies. Yeah. yeah. Nothing like them. Making movies and your death movies. experience. Yeah. It's entertainment, Cole. Entertainment. That's all it is. Oh, yeah. I can be very entertaining. <laughs> I thought it was really great. I loved it. Every second of it. It was really great. Oh, the film is... It was way better than I ever imagined. I thought it was awesome. It was legendary and dangerous. I loved the movie. What was there not to love? I loved it. I thought it was great. I love westerns and I thought they did a great job with the western. I would say that it's a family friendly film. Um, I think that it has a nice uh, morality track to it and you can get into it and realize you're in a serious comedic film that's fun to watch. Well, it, it's a great western. It's a good story. It's it's a it's based on fact. It's history. So I love this movie so much. I want to see it again, like right now. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. I hope we can find a way to stop this, but it's all gone too far. And you could tell that everybody enjoyed it, and it was really like and just it fell in love with it. I would say um, it's amazing. It's a western that actually has substance. You know, it has a moment in time, multiple moments with multiple characters, multiple storylines that say, hey, I'm relatable. I particularly like the bank scene, the bank teller. It, it was just totally amazing. And I, I believe it stands next to anything out of Hollywood that I've seen.